I have read many college essays over the past year, and I've noticed that people keep on making the same mistakes over and over again. So today, I want to talk about the most common college essay mistakes and how you can avoid them in your essays. Before we begin, I just want to let you guys know that this video is going to be geared towards your personal statement or your main college essay, sometimes also called the Common App Essay. If you guys would like me to release a video about how to write your supplemental essays, just let me know in the comments. So without further ado, let's get into the first college essay mistake. Our first mistake is too much fluff. In the writing that we do at school, a lot of us are very used to trying to reach a word minimum and adding just like random fluff in order to get to that minimum, but college essay writing is very different because for your personal statement, you're limited to 650 words. That's not a lot of words, so instead of the game being trying to reach 650 words, the game is instead trying to condense as much as you can into 650 words. One of the main ways that fluff manifests itself into college essay writing is through pretentious and wordy language. When we learn to write narratives in school, a lot of us are congratulated whenever we use long words and very vivid descriptions. However, college admissions officers don't care that much about the craft of your writing, what's much more important is the substance behind it. On top of that, your admissions officers don't have that long to read your essays, so writing in a very wordy manner makes it much harder for them to understand your essay. Confusing your admissions officers with your writing is the last thing you want to do since this can leave a bad impression on them. Instead, you want your writing to be as clear and easy to understand as possible, which makes their job a lot easier. Another way that fluff finds itself into college essays is through writing too much about the past. When most people write personal statements, they usually start them with anecdotes from the past. And this is okay, however it's a problem when the past takes up the majority of your essay. Ideally, the past should take up less than half of your essay. The reason that this is very important is because the job of a college admissions officer is to determine whether you're going to be a successful and contributing member of their campus. The student that these college admissions officers are deciding to admit is who you are right now, and not who you were in the past. Because of this, if your essay focuses too much on who you were in the past and not enough on who you are now, college admissions officers won't be able to definitively say whether you're a good candidate for admission. Before we continue with the video, I just want to remind you guys to please subscribe to my channel. Currently, we're at 1,481 subscribers, yet only 4.8% of you guys are subscribed, which is really saddening to me, because if the other 95.2% of you guys subscribed, we would get to 30,854 subscribers, which would be amazing, so please subscribe to my channel. And let's get back to the video. The next college essay mistake we're going to talk about is too generic. I've read so many college essays that sound just like anyone could have written them. How I've heard it put before is that your goal should be that if you were to leave your essay at school accidentally, let's say, without your name on it, and someone were to pick it up and read through it, they should be able to know immediately that it's your essay. The biggest problem is that people write essays where they talk about something that literally anyone could have experienced, so it doesn't have this level of uniqueness. Now, I'm not trying to put the unreasonable expectation on you of writing an essay that no one has seen before because there's billions of us on this planet, chances are your experiences aren't completely unique. However, there is definitely a difference between an essay that is completely generic and one that attempts to be unique. One way to combat having a boring, generic essay is to make your essay engaging. Adding devices like dialogue and imagery in the correct places can make your essay much more interesting to read instead of something that your admissions officer will just want to put down after a couple minutes. Your goal should be that if you were to hand your essay to a random person on the street, you should want whoever's reading your essay to want to keep on reading it because it's just that interesting. One thing that often gets in the way of this is having your essay sound too much like a college essay. I've read too many essays where they talk very plainly, they'll be like, this thing happened to me and then from this experience I learned blank, or they'll actually have a sentence like that, and that screams college essay. At the end of the day, it is a college essay, but you don't want your writing to sound like your mom is forcing you to write this. The last thing to avoid a generic essay is to be vulnerable and include specifics in your essays. If you're not vulnerable enough in your essay, it can come off as very generic. Now, I'm not encouraging you to trauma dump in your essay per se. However, you should include specifics about your lived experiences that make them unique from anyone else's. A lot of people go through the same experiences in life, but it's the feelings that we have and the nuances that define our situations that make our experiences unique compared to other people's. If you're able to be vulnerable in your essay and talk specifics at appropriate times, your essay will be far from generic. My lighting is so much darker now that it's dark outside, but we're going to continue with the video. The third college essay mistake is a lack of reflection and insight. A very common college essay trope is for people to write about negative experiences that happened to them. However, this can leave a bad taste in admissions officers' mouths if you don't couple that experience with some sort of reflection. 
Not only is it important to talk about the unique experiences that we've had in our lives, but it's also important to talk about how these experiences have affected our outlooks, beliefs, and actions. Showing this level of insight in your essay is going to signal to admissions officers that you're going to be able to continue growing from negative experiences once you're on campus. If your college essay just talks about what happened to you and not about how it's affected your behavior, it's just going to sound like a sob story. The next college essay mistake is an abrupt ending. One of the worst feelings is when you're reading a college essay that's really great and then you get to the end and it just kind of falls flat. The writer has talked about their life experiences and how these have affected their actions in the present and then they just leave it at that. One of the best ways to address this abrupt type of ending is to talk about the future. This also makes the admissions officer's job much easier. Because remember, the admissions officer is kind of like a fortune teller. They're trying to see into the future and determine the type of person you'll be at their college. If you're able to give that future image to them, instead of forcing them to infer it, it can make their job a lot easier. And the last point, I was just talking about how you should include insight and reflection on your experiences. As kind of an addendum to that point, you can actually include insight not only about how your experiences have affected your present actions, but how the lessons you've learned from your experiences are going to affect how you plan to behave in the future. This type of future thinking is a very effective way to end a college essay and can leave a really good taste in an admissions officer's mouth. For example, in my personal statement, I talked about how I used to be very uncomfortable in my identity, but learned a lot about who I was and to love that person through going outside of my comfort zone. I ended my personal statement that because of this lesson, I'm going to continue seeking opportunities to venture outside of my comfort zone in college. Extending your college essay with this type of insight is something that I think can be done to any college essay, so you should definitely do this instead of ending it abruptly. The last college essay mistake is no overarching theme. I talked earlier in this video about how you should avoid essays that are generic and confusing, and an essay without an overarching theme is something that can definitely lend itself to being generic and confusing. It's definitely much easier if you come up with your theme before you even start to write your essay. Essentially, you want your admissions officer to be able to fully encapsulate the premise of your essay in a sentence or two. An essay with an overarching theme will be much more memorable to admissions officers than one that doesn't have a very clear direction. Also, it'll make identifying and omitting the fluff in your essay much easier because these parts won't be related to the theme. Alright, that concludes today's video. I hope you guys found this helpful. I've just been seeing so many essays where people have been making these mistakes over and over again, and I just felt really compelled to release a video on this so I can just share this knowledge with all of you guys at once instead of having to individually tell people to correct these things. So hopefully you don't make any of these mistakes when you write your essay now. I know it's kind of in the middle of college essay writing season, so good luck guys, you got this, and just continue watching my videos because I'll be releasing more helpful content soon. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!